Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to V7 Summer 2024 update from Gals of Weather V. So here we go again, time to bring you another summer update. We're up to update number seven. Um, now, and we're virtually at the halfway point. In fact, we might even be at the halfway point. I think we are. Um, no, so, uh, this is going to be a little bit different. It's an outside of the box special presentation. The concept and presentation, um, developed by the amazing Richard Shaw, our amazing friend, uh, Richard. Thank you so much, Rich, for developing this, uh, concept and presentation for its outside of the box special, uh, for us. So I shall get on that for you in a second. You'll find out what we're looking at and then see the analogs, um, etc., etc. In a moment, but uh, just to say that the first video of today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast, and we're going to be live at 6 p.m. with our 10 to 14 there. We'll include some long range in that as well, so it's going to be an epic, epic live. If you're around the channel at 6, I shall see you a little bit later on. Thank you so much, Rich, as well, for our uh, summer updates gift. So, this is gift number two. I love it. Thank you so much, Richard, for our uh, uh, summer updates gift based on a shrine and bring picture as well so this is a, a joint a collaboration between Shryan and uh, Rich thank you so much to hashtag Team Gav as always and again thank you so much Rich for our uh, presentation and for the concept uh, etc you know amazing amazing job my friend thank you so much I just hope I can do it justice I'm never very good at reading out scripts so uh, <laughs> any mistakes you know that I make it's entirely my fault is not a reflection on the uh, rich at all. Okay, let's do this then. See how I get on. Uh, hi everyone. This out of the box special is unique as always. Maybe this one can be taken more seriously due to the repeating patterns picked up over the last 123 years. I've looked back from 1900 to 2023 and noticed an atmosphere temperature cool down in the UK between September's and December's of over 10 Celsius as an example. 2023 September came in at 17 degrees as you know a high record and December 2023 came in at 7 degrees so there's the 10 Celsius uh, temperature differential between September and also December. So you can see according to over the three months of at least 10 Celsius and that's what I'm looking for. I wonder how many times this has happened in the last 123 years. Well, I know, lol, it's a laugh out loud, of course. Uh, it's a whopping 39 times. I'm quite surprised when I looked at the data, around 32%. So let's put those years on the next slide. Here they are. We've got uh, 1901. Uh, we've got 1906. We've got 1916. We've got 1917. We've got 1926, 1927. 1933, 1935. 1937, 1939, 2001, 2005, 2006, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2014, 2016, 2022, and last year, of course, 2023. So, as you can see, a lot of years, with the highest years being 1933 at 13.3 differential, 1961 at 13 degree differential, and the biggest uh, differential is 1981 with a 14.3 uh, temperature differential. And 2021, understandably, the highest at 14.5 uh, temperature difference between September and December. We need to then look at uh, further temperature drops in those years to then see if that cooling continues into January. This is where you might find it complicated, but the data is needed to finalise the temperature findings before the following summers, and then we can match those analogue years. To do this, we need to see a new drop in the same year from October to the following January. This must be at least 7 degrees. So another example, 2023, October was 12.1, and January was 4.7. That was 4.7. That's a drop of 7 
6.4 degrees. So it means those 39 years overall must have must have had a drop twice. Must have, must have had, sorry, I believe, must have had a drop twice, once of at least 10 Celsius between September and December, then a matching a drop between uh, October and January of at least 7 degrees. So a 10 Celsius temperature differential between September and December, and then a 7 Celsius or more temperature differential between October and January. Now, that leaves us with 17 years, as this is what happened. October to January, on those same 39 years, applied a drop of at least 7 degrees, 1906, 1916, 1939, 1949, 1958, 1962, 1963, 1968, 1976, 1976. 8, 1995, 1996, 2005, 2009, 2014, 2022, 2023, and of course, 2024, question mark, question mark, question mark. So that, in a complicated nutshell, is that. Now, the summers that follow would be 1907, 1917, 1914, 1950, 1959, 1963, 1964, 1965, 1967, 1968, 1969, 1977, 2006, 2010, 2015, and 2023 analogues coming up. Thanks for watching this presentation. Thanks to Gavin, the Ration, and Shrine for the analogues. Take care. Richard Draw, 2024. How did that go? How did Gav do with that? Not too bad. So I was going to give myself a little round of Messed up too much. Just one moment. I messed up a little bit. Um, right, okay, thank you so, so much, Richard, for the presentation. Let's have a look, then. Let's have a look at some of these uh, analogs. We're going to start off with summer 1907. Here we go, then. Uh, this is a cool and unsettled summer. Trough of low pressure, turbo law, and uh, winds coming in from... Of course, we don't normally look at analogs before... Uh, 1950, but when we go outside of a box, we do. <laughs> right, so, uh, summer 1907, cool and unsettled, with a trough of low pressure across northern Europe, and winds coming in from a northerly direction, a cool, unsettled summer to start us off. 1917 is absolutely abysmal, this summer with deep low pressure in the Atlantic into western parts of Europe, very, very unsettled summer. Indeed, so that's cold and wet in the summer of 1917. And then we've got the summer of 1940. This is a classic front-loaded summer, actually, with uh, low pressure, new pressure to the east. High pressure is out in the Atlantic, and winds could come again from a northerly or a northwesterly direction. So that starts off with a very dry and really warm June, actually, in 1940. It gets progressively cooler and more unsettled as the uh, summer goes along. Classic front-loaded summer. We've got the summer of 1950 showing up next with lots of low pressure in the Atlantic, heading into western parts of Europe. Quite a cool and wet summer with that one. Now, this is our first decent summer. This is 1959. This is a pretty long and really quite hot summer. So it's one of those summers that starts in the spring. March and April begin to yield the pattern of the summer. And it's still going on well into the autumn, well into October. We have lots of dry and warm weather. And in the peak of the summer, there are many hot and dry days in the summer of 1959. That's a classic summer. We have to wait until probably 1975 for the next uh, sort of long, hot type summer. So it'd be 16 years, although 1969 wasn't too bad. We'll wrap that in a second. Um, we've got summer of 1963 showing up next. This is a classic 1960s summer, quite cool, unsettled, and pretty wet as well. And uh, then the summer of 1964 follows. Remember, all of these summers are following uh, a 10, cel 10 Celsius temperature differential between September and December. Uh, followed by a 7 Celsius or more 
uh, temperature differential between um, between uh, October and January. Summer 1964, again, another pretty cool unsettled summer. High pressure in the Atlantic, low pressure to the north. Winds coming in from a northwesterly type direction. Ah, now this is 1969, so this is probably the best summer of the uh, 1960s, actually. That's not saying much. It's a decade of really atrocious summers at the best of times, along with pretty cold winters at times, of course. Um, but it does have a couple of, uh, of slightly better summers, so this is one of them. In the modern era of 1969, you know, it wouldn't be a summer that would be particularly remembered. But back in the 60s, back in the 1960s, probably the best summer of the decade. Lots of pretty warm and dry weather through most of that summer. Uh, we've got the summer of 1977, and this brings to an end very abruptly the two long hot summers of 75, 75 and 76. This is a much cooler summer. Quite a dry summer, that, I think, this one. But uh, certainly a lot cooler with winds tending to be coming from a northeasterly direction a lot of the time. The summer of 1979 shows up next. This one's rather cool and mixed with low pressure to the north of the east. Higher pressure is out to the Atlantic. The winds are coming in from generally a northwesterly type direction. We've got the summer of 1996 uh, turning up next. There's a bit of everything with this summer. Um, they quite long gap there, actually, and interestingly, from 1979 to 1996. Um, as I say, this is a bit of a summer... Uh, for every word. So, a bit of this, bit of that. There's some quite hot weather, a few uh, heat waves in this summer, but also some really quite cool and unsettled days. There's quite a few wet days, but also extended runs of dry weather. So, you know, I think it's one of those summers, maybe the one with 2020, where uh, there's something for everyone, whatever your tastes of weather, you can find it in the summer of 1996. And so, consequently, the analogue doesn't actually yield all that much really when it comes to uh you know the overall uh, pattern of the summer because it's very variable 1997 is a hot summer eventually so this one has high pressure towards scandinavia and winds tended to be coming in from an easterly direction with low pressure down to the south so this includes a very very hot august um and uh, also a wet June. Now, I suppose, if anything, it's like a backloaded summer. Though August 97 is also very wet. So it's an unusual combination, you know, but it's a hot month, but also um, quite thundery, lots of thunderstorms, and, and also quite a wet month. It is a wet summer that we have in 1997, but it definitely gets hotter later. And this is a bit of a classic summer. This is 2006, with high pressure in from the Atlantic, into western and also northern parts of Europe. Lots of dry and uh, really warm weather during the summer of 2006, especially in June and July. It does wobble a little bit in uh, August. Uh, the best of the summer is uh, June and, and also July, which is a very, very hot month, of course. 19 Celsius CT month. Good gracious me. 2010 is another one of those classic front-loaded summers. So it has higher pressure out to the west and a trough of low pressure towards the northeast. So this has a pretty dry and quite hot June. Gets progressively more unsettled as we go along, culminating in quite a cool and wet August in 2010. And then 2015 overall is quite unsettled and mixed summer with lots of low pressure in the Atlantic and winds coming in from a west or a southwesterly direction. It has high pressure to the north and low, it has uh, high pressure south, low pressure to the north, I should say. Does contain one very hot spell at the beginning of July 2015. It's the first summer that has a heat spike, really, of a run of summers that have um, impressive heat spikes. Otherwise, though, it's a, forget it's a forgettable pretty cool and unsettled summer. And then finally, the last summer that uh, does this uh, temperature differential between September and December and also October and January is the summer of 2023 with plenty of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. It's a relatively... <coughs> Sorry, buddy. It's a relatively unsettled summer that we have in 2023, but we do have a, a warm or a hot June. So um, it starts off pretty good. Again, front-loaded, starts off pretty good, and then deteriorates 
early July sees that uh, hot and dry weather breaking and, and the summer never really recovers, not until we get to September. Anyway, pretty unsettled uh, July and August in 2023. Right, so let's start putting all of that together then. This is how all June's combined are looking for our Out of the Box special, looking at years from 1907 to 2015. And we finally have lots of low pressure to the north of the country with higher pressure away to the east. So probably a mixed signal. There could be some warm conditions with the, uh, with the trough in the Atlantic and uh, below the high pressure away to the east, rich to the east, that could allow for some southerly type influences in the dunes. All July's combined are looking like this, with lots of low pressure to the north, and higher pressure is down to the south. All winds are tending to be coming in from a west or a southwesterly direction. So more of a westerly signal. Um, could be reasonably dry still, both a lot of these Julys in the south, but probably a more mixed single. But the worst of it is August. Look at this. We seem, tend to uh, stick up a trough of low pressure right over top of the UK and Western Europe. It's combined with northern blocking. So basically, if it can go wrong, it is going wrong. Um, for those August, a pretty cool and wet signal. And all summers combined for our outside box special 1907 to 2015. It's an unsettled signal overall. That particularly being skewered, though, I think, by the August. Um, I don't think that the uh, Junes and Julys are quite as bad as you might get from um, the analogue. And what about if we narrow things down? Just look at the years from 1950 to 2023. Um, well, then we perhaps have a slightly more anti-cyclonic signal with some higher pressure in from the Atlantic into uh, western northern parts of Europe. So lower pressure is down to the south. So some slightly, uh, a slightly drier and warmer signal for the dunes, maybe. July may be also lifting the heights a little bit. It's very similar, actually. The all July's combined um, from 1950 to 2023 compared to the all July's combined overall from 1907 onwards. So of the um, July's low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, perhaps a slightly stronger single high pressure to the south, but not much of a difference. And then again, we see that there is a marked deterioration for the uh, August 1915, 1923, uh, what I'm talking about, uh, 1950 to 2023, uh, with low pressure uh, across western parts of Europe, and again, we do see evidence of uh, northern blocking as well, higher pressure uh, towards far north Scandinavia and into Swarbrick and uh, whatnot. So uh, finally, this is how all summers combined, looking for our, uh, for our outside of the box special 1950 to 2023. And um, I'm not sure the analogue tells us a great deal. Every month is individual, really, but it has higher pressure in the Atlantic and up towards Scandinavia, lower pressure to the south. I think very much favours a front-loaded, some of the best of weather happening in June, and then a deterioration as we go further along, culminating in a pretty poor signal, it has to be said, for the August. Right, well, that's our seven summer 2024 update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much to be amazing, wondrous Richard. Thank you so much, Richard, for our Outside of the Box special and presentation. That's absolutely fantastic, my friend. I hope I did your work justice when I was uh, reading my script. <laughs> As you know, the guy's not the best when it comes to reading out scripts, but I think I think I did all right with that one. I think I did. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, uh, I love it. Thank you so much, my friend, for our seventh summer update. Thank you so much to Shrine as well. Thank you so much to all of you for uh, tuning in. If you've enjoyed this summer update, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And we'll be releasing the Gals Web this summer. 2024 forecast on the 26th of August. So we are moving um, ever more and inexorably into the business end of the summer updates. Right, we're going to be back at 6 p.m. live streaming. So I shall see you a little bit later. I've got any questions about this summer update, then please uh, fire away on me uh, live. I should do my best to answer those. And uh, so we'll be live streaming at 10 to 14 day. And we'll also include some long range in that live stream as well. So this is a Sunday live stream. So I've got to do that for you. See you a little bit later on, everybody. But for the 7th Summer 2024 update, outside of a box special, 
Thank you so much yet again, once again, to the amazing Richard Trot. Uh, but all these, I've always said so much, so I'll update that's all for now. And thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.